So on a previous video, I did a comparison of the three main open source video editors that I've used. OpenShot, Data Live, and Shotcut. And on that video, I tried to take an objective approach for somebody who's either brand new to video editing, or maybe somebody who's thinking about using an open source video editor. So if you wanted to see that original comparison video, I will leave that in the description area below. But on today's video, it's pretty much going to be all about me and my own personal use of these open source video editors. And at the end of the video, you're going to see which one is my personal favorite and why I use this video editor above all the other ones on a regular basis. Let's go ahead and get into this comparison. Welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On this channel, you'll learn how to be creative and I'll teach you the tools you need to create. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel create more content like this. Now, before I get into this comparison, let's go over a few important things. Starting with the actual computer that I'm using. So in this case, the operating system that I'm using is Linux Mint 20.1. The CPU that I'm running is an Intel Core i7-6700K running at four gigahertz. I have 32 gigs of RAM. The GPU that I'm using is an AMD RX 470 with four gigs of RAM. And the majority of my storage is gonna be all SSDs. Except for my mass storage, I have some mechanical drives for both internal and also external. But overall, this is the computer that I've been using since 2016. I have made some upgrades since then, mainly the RAM and my storage. But other than that, I think this is a fairly good computer for the majority of my needs. And second to that is on this comparison, I'm not going to be comparing all the features between these video editors. It's primarily going to be focusing on the features that are important to me in my daily use and my video editing needs. So let's first start off with OpenShot because this is really the video editor that got me into video editing in the first place. And prior to that, I was using Windows Movie Maker. So OpenShot has a really special place in my heart because it's also the first open source video editor that I use. But unfortunately, I rarely ever use it anymore. And as a matter of fact, the only time I really use OpenShot is to do OpenShot tutorial videos. So that really only leaves me with Hayden Live and Shotcut, which is the ones that I use on a regular basis. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I'm not going to be doing a features versus features comparison because there's so many features available in both video editors and the features that you use is going to be different from the ones that I use. So I'm going to be focused on the things that are most important to me on a regular use case. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with the one that I think is most important and that is the type of video files that you're going to be working with. And so there are many different resolutions and aspect ratios that you can use, but for most people, they're either going to be doing 1080p or 4K. And so when it comes to 1080p, I think Caden Live and Shotcut, they work about the same when it comes to overall performance. But when it comes to 4K, there is a difference. And so in this case, I have both of the same video files in both of these video editors. And whenever I play this back, overall, I think it handles it about the same. And obviously it does depend on your hardware. So if you play for the very first time, there will be some stuttering because it's gonna load this into uh, memory and RAM. But uh, once you have that loaded into memory, and if you have a lot of memory like what I have, and a fast SSD, it will make a difference because you really won't get that stutter that you have at the beginning. But as you can see here, I'm running both of the same clips in both of these video editors, and they work about the same. And when it comes to the actual resolution of these video files, if I go to clip properties, they are running at a resolution of 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. And so in general, as you can see, the 1080p and specifically 4K performance, it's about the same in both of these video editors. But the one place that I did notice a difference is if you actually had more complex projects and you didn't use uh, proxy clips and you didn't use the preview feature in Caden Live, Shotcut does perform better on more complex projects by default. So if you are going to be working with 4K files or higher resolutions, then it's very important for you to have the ability to use proxy files. So this was a huge feature that was missing from Shotcut, but now you have that available under settings, proxy, and now you can use proxy. Choose where you want to store the proxy files, and you can also use hardware and configure hardware encoder settings. So these are very important features to have. And if you did not have the ability to use proxy clips, then, well, you're pretty much not going to be able to use high resolution files, especially on lower spec machines. But now that you have the ability to use lower resolution proxy clips in your projects, then your workflow is going to be a lot faster without sacrificing any performance. 
Now within Caden Live, it's had this proxy feature for a long time now. So if you go to project and go to your project settings, you see an option for proxy. So in this case, you can enable proxy clips. You could choose when you want to generate these proxy files. You could also use different encoding profiles. And there's also external proxy clips as well. So Caden Live does offer you more in here. And another thing that Caden Live allows you to do, it allows you to quickly transcode files to different formats really quickly. And so all of these features I feel is going to benefit you overall if you are going to be using 4K files or higher. And in this case, uh, since Caden Live has had it so long, I think it definitely has the edge because it not only can do the proxy clips, but it offers you other features as well and more flexibility when using proxy clips. And so now let's look at the one area where I definitely see a performance difference. And this was something that didn't exist in previous versions, but now is definitely an issue and one that hopefully will get fixed in the future. So the problem I'm talking about here is whenever you are adding filters, effects, uh, or compositions to your actual project file. So let me show you what I mean. So I have this lower third down here and the filter that I applied is a chroma key. So let me play this for you. And as you notice, uh, there is my subscribe button. And if I did not have this chroma key feature, this entire screen would be black and I wouldn't be able to see anything below it. And so I've applied this chroma key. And even though there is a little bit of performance issue at the beginning, you know, it does play overall and it just keeps on going. And so uh, that's how it looks like in Shotcut. But the same effect in Caden Live, there is definitely an issue. So if I play this right now, See how there's a lot of stutter. And even when I'm not doing this video recording, it still has the same problem. And this problem is more pronounced whenever I have 4K videos, which is what I have in both of these projects. And so the weird thing is I didn't have this issue in previous versions of Caden Live. Uh, but whatever they did, it definitely affects this. So if you're going to be using any type of compositions or effects, then it's going to be an issue. However, there are some remedies that you can use. So obviously you could always use proxy clips, uh, but the one thing Caden Live does offer, it allows you to preview this in a lower quality mode. So if you go here, these dots, go to track compositing, and instead of high quality, you could choose preview. So if I have it on preview and I play this back, it does run better and it's closer to how it performs in Shotcut especially whenever it loads this into memory. But this is a problem that I notice, and this problem is even more pronounced whenever you are adding more effects, your projects get a lot bigger, and you have other things like music and audio as well. Then overall, I've noticed that the performance is better in Shotcut, but obviously if you are gonna be using things like proxy clips or if you're using this preview mode, then the performance gets a lot better in Caden Live. But out of the box, this is one thing that is sorely lacking in Caden Live, where the overall performance, whenever you add effects, severely gets impacted by using them. For serious YouTubers, check out TubeBuddy, the premier tool news at geekoutdoors.com. Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. So now let's look at the one area that can be easily overlooked. But it's the one area that is so important, especially if you're going to be using these video editors day in and day out. And that's the overall usability, the overall user interface. And when it comes to that, I really feel in this case that overall, they kind of do work the same. Okay, so if you're looking around your project timelines where it should be, then they have these various sections that you can use, you know, so if you want to do a color correction, you want to do audio, there's a player right here for preview, there's effects, editing, and if you go to Caden Live, it has something very similar as well. There's a logging, editing, there's your audio, effects, and color. But I would say overall, it's just a lot easier here in Caden Live. Whereas Shotcut, it doesn't look like it's as mature um, as what it has in Caden Live. Now, obviously, if you are using this on a regular basis, then you will get used to the interface. But at least for me, going back and forth between Caden Live and Shotcut, I always find myself, you know, kind of feeling a little lost when I come to Shotcut. You know, even though the overall basic features are the same, it's like things here, it's just kind of confusing. Okay, let's just say that, you know, there's just a lot of stuff visually 
And there's many ways in which you can actually get lost in this program. Versus in Caden Liar, things are laid out very intuitively. And that's one thing that I do appreciate with this. And at the same time, this is very similar to how you'd be using this in a more pro video editor. So if you were using something like Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, um, Apple Final Cut, or any of the number of these pro video editors, they look more like this. Whereas in Shotcut, it kind of has its own look and feel. And once again, you can get used to it, but it really makes it a lot more difficult if you kind of have to like readjust yourself every time. And so that's like my overall thoughts on this. The usability is something that you know, people might not think about, but if they're using this regularly, and especially if you're using multiple video editors, you'll notice these differences really quickly. So when it comes to usability and overall, you know, UX design, I feel that Caden Live is a lot more mature and things are a lot more intuitive, you know, whereas this one, I still feel like it's not quite there yet. So this final part of the comparison, I'm going to be talking about some key features that, at least for me, does affect my overall workflow. So let me show you why this is important to me. So in Caden Live, if I wanted to select multiple clips and move them around, it's pretty easy. You know, right now I can just move this. So it moves the video and audio portion. And if I wanted to move multiple clips, I could easily do that by holding down the shift key and selecting it. But another very important thing that it allows me to do is if I right click on the mouse, I could actually group these clips. So this is a very important feature. Now within Shotcut, you can do something very similar. So you could select a clip and you could move it around tracks. And the only difference is if you move it over an existing track like this one, right? It actually overwrites it and remove a portion of that clip. So this is how it works by default. And I don't particularly like that because it removes portions of the clip below it. Whereas within Caden Live, if you try to do that, so let me ungroup these clips. So if I try to move it here and there is a clip below it, it won't let me do that. And so that is an important feature, I think, so that you don't accidentally uh, overwrite something that you have. Now, the other thing that is definitely missing here is the ability to group clips. Now you can select multiple clips at the same time. So say for example, you select this clip, but instead of shift, you're gonna hold down control. So now you're able to do that. So you can still move multiple clips around, but what is lacking here is the ability to group clips together. Okay, so there's currently not a way for you to group clips together. And I think that is a very important thing to have. And then other things that are currently not here in Shotcut is the ability to do voiceovers. So say, for example, I want to add another track to do voiceovers. I can uh, right click on my mouse, insert track, and then I could add a audio record track. Now I can do voiceovers or I can go to my audio tab and do it here. So currently uh, Shotcut doesn't have this. And then one other feature that Caden Live has is the ability to use subtitles. So there is an edit subtitle tool in here. I could add subtitles if I wanted to. And so that's something that is not currently available within Shotcut. And as I stated earlier, there are many features in both of these video editors. So some features are available in here, might not be available here, but at least for me, these are some of the key features that are important to me. And these will affect the overall workflow that you have and the decisions that you make whenever you are choosing a video editor. So as you could probably tell from this comparison, there's definitely things that I really do like in both video editors, but if you even keep in count, then you could probably tell that my favorite open source video editor is going to be Caden Live for all the reasons that I stated a little bit earlier. And also for the fact that since I use a lot of different video editors and specifically DaVinci Resolve, then using Caden Live is more familiar to me. And it's just a lot easier for me to work from one video editor to another. And as a matter of fact, the video editor that I'm using to edit this particular episode is in Caden Live. And so those are my thoughts on the three open source video editors that I've used and the ones that I'm currently using and the one that I use the most and which is my favorite. And so if you actually have any thoughts on this or any other video editors that you use, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did enjoy these video editor tutorials, well, I have playlists for all of these open source video editors including other video editors like DaVinci Resolve and CyberLink PowerDirector. If you wanted to see those, I'll have that in the description as well. 
as always if you did get value out of these videos be sure to share like and subscribe and if you're a creative geek like me and you want to get exclusive access to more content that i don't put out here publicly on my youtube channel then join my goal content creators group where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there and the best part is all of this is free simply head over to the link below check on the page and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group.